It is 8.30, it's time for the weekly meeting of the Mitchell County Board of Supervisors. We do now have a full board, and welcome the board again. Um, uh, we have an agenda in front of us. Uh, items to note, uh, under C, I'd like to put Otrano Bridge again. I uh, got an email yesterday on that. Uh, other than that, I had nothing. Uh, any other additions, corrections? Well, we could probably discuss uh, doing an ad for the vehicles for sale. Okay. There's a couple of them. Yep, under items. See if there's going to be marked up. been moved and seconded further discussion hearing none all those in favor of the motion signify the saying aye aye, aye. aye. all those motion carried uh county attorney general discussion um <clears throat> two things number one um the county was sued and i was served yesterday and i sent you a copy of the petition shannon i don't have your email address but I'll, we're going to talk later today and i'll get that um that's the one where mark evans um went through the snow fence and went into that ditch. Um, I contacted the insurance company. <clears throat> They're going to be providing a defense. Um, I also emailed their attorney, Ms. Richard Smith, his attorney, and said, you know, if you want to settle this for nuisance value, let me know. Otherwise, you know, we're going to defend because we think uh, the claim is barred by the emergency doctrine. So that's where that stands. Talk to the insurance company, they're going to be providing an answer to the event. So, Noah Crooks, we got another check for reimbursement of uh, expert fees for $3,545. I'll give okay. you that. Um, though that was the expert we had paid, the expert, <coughs> Michael Taylor. And then we got reimbursed first from the state, but they sent the check to Taylor instead of to us, so Taylor cashed it and wrote the check back to us. Well, that was nice of him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had sent him an email. I said, you know, did you get that check? And it says, I did it there. Glad you sent your email about possible reimbursement twice on Crooks for a number of reasons, which could be summed up as sloppy bookkeeping. I now know that I have indeed received two checks, one from the county and one from the state. So I'll send you a check back. So, other than that, I don't have anything. Anybody else have? Thank you, Kaylee. All right. Uh, Tom. <laughs> Morning. Um, just an update today. There's no pay stuff or anything like that. Um, at Osage, we'll be pouring about 170 yards for footings on the main tank either tomorrow or Thursday. They're continuing to work out here. They're starting to come out of the ground on this particular site over by the uh, treatment plant. I've been coordinating with Luke <coughs> on sanitary sewer services out there. That's one of the big pushes to so get the lab functioning. Um, other than that, there's been no questions, comments, concerns up to this point. Reminder that next Wednesday is 9 o'clock progress meeting at Valent, a 10.30 progress meeting at the wastewater plant. You're all welcome. Do I change the colors on that building? Now what? <laughs> what do you want? Fuchsia and what? No, i lucky enough to have a tour of the Valent facility, but you see there's some gray with green trim. Yeah. Okay, what we make ours? Two different colors, gray. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, you guys got to make those decisions. Well, I know, but, but it's the <laughs> color scheme of the other place, you know, right. but, but I'm sure it'll be just fine. I don't know. I'm just like ask. I can ask to see where they're at with it. I mean, I, I submit everything after we talked. You want me to check on it? I just thought kind of nice, everything kind of blended together. I mean, that's a darker ours, gray, right? Yeah, ours is lighter and darker. Okay, so if we did darker and then green trim. They have a gray roof out there too, right? Everything's gray except well, their the roofs are all flat, but the trims some of them are <coughs> slope, but they're the, all its steel is the same color and it's just got a green trim. Okay. 
I'll see where they're at with it. Yeah, um, that's it's not a problem. Maybe, yeah. but I just thought, well, it would make everything really look nicer. Well, we made a plaque that said "Color by," but you guys. Forever in gray. I'll check that one. Okay. And if I could change that, certainly will change it. <laughs> but no, I have. Which one? Our plan or theirs? Theirs. A lot of work to do. Where's the on off switch? You know, it's biological based. You really don't have one. I you know, but I mean, you start feeding it and it just <coughs> goes. It's so millions of miles of wire and pipes. And well, you know, as long as we're ahead of them, I guess they really don't care yeah. what their schedule is. So. If you look at the outside, it looks almost done just because they got their decorative work up by the office and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, let's say the last five percent takes ninety five percent of the time. So I, you know that. Other than that, everything's going great. Uh, like I said, construction's going on. Um, the building over there, they're going to try to get the footings in this before hard winter hits. They like to build that building. So that's what they're kind of pushing now after we get these next construction done is to get that building foundation going. So I'm getting that weather tight. There's a lot of stuff in there to work on. So but other than that, things good. You guys, questions, comments, anything you've seen out there? You got any questions what's going on with that? No, I'll come out and check it out. Okay. Everybody's welcome anytime. Um, hard hat. <coughs> they got hard hats there. Okay. I have my own. Again, next Wednesday, 9 and 10.30. 9 over there, 10.30 over there. That's all I got. Yep. Anybody else have anything for? No. Nope. Well, thank you, Tanley. All right. We'll see you later. Yep. Thank right, you, guys. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Item. Item four. Approval of proclamation supporting national manufacturing day, October fourth. Is somebody here supporting that, or is um, that, is actually, that you here? have two of us here to support this okay. today. <laughs> we were just checking uh, as to uh, who was going to say what. Well, do you have the actual official one? Yes, yeah. Okay, good. Well, um, the uh, National Manufacturing Day is October 4th, and mm -hmm. so uh, regionally, uh, each one of us and folks involved in economic development are going to their Board of Supervisors and actually requesting that uh, we uh, approve a proclamation. And so I'll read it to the group um, and then I'll have you act accordingly. Whereas uh, manufacturing makes a significant contribution to the national, state, and local economy, and whereas manufacturing provides good employment opportunities and careers for skilled workers, and whereas our community is fortunate to be home of the, uh, I should say county, is fortunate enough to be the home of many great manufacturing companies, and that our county's manufacturing companies are vitally important to the prosperity of Mitchell County. That's it, Stan. That's it. Okay. Well, didn't look at any other comments. Uh, do we have a motion to approve of this uh, proclamation? I'll second. Well, right, so. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, both men. Aye. All us. Aye. Well, no, your motion carried. Uh, Stan? Uh, yeah, just a second. Jim, do you want to, I know it's too late for this week, but uh, can you uh, get this in the paper next mm -hmm. week, the, the supervisors? Yeah. While I'm here and while Representative Burns is here, I'd also like to uh, publicly announce uh, that uh, last week was a, a neat week for the representative. Um, I had known that he was going to be recognized by the professional developers of Iowa for his work in supporting economic development across the state of Iowa, but I was a little surprised to hear in the same week that the League of Cities had also um, chosen Representative Burns uh, to be recognized. So uh, last Friday, um, our group was um, meeting as a statewide group in Cedar Falls. And um, 
Josh was presented with the actual award for Legislator of the Year. And so um, I wanted to let you all know that. Um, obviously, he works very diligently whenever I've needed assistance on our economic development projects, but uh, it was neat to be able to, to say he was our legislator and, and he was recognized for his efforts on a statewide basis. So, Jim, I sent you the press release and I'm sorry the photo's not as good as it should be, but, uh, and I know that uh, Mayor Cooper and Jerry were at the League of Cities event, and so I don't know much about that award other than I found out uh, that. So please join me in congratulating Josh on that award. And let's make a note in the minutes that uh, Josh received this, and that uh, the board is very supportive of his efforts. And you want to say a couple things about uh, this, Josh? <laughs> uh, well, I was here for the proclam proclamation, but uh, uh, like I told Brenda and I told these groups, I mean, seriously, I, I, I'm not doing this for awards. And, and it's a great honor and stuff, but quite honestly, they should be rewarding 150 legislators for this because they all campaign on jobs and economy anyway. So if they follow through with their campaign promises, then we should be recognized 150 people every time. So um, I, I think it's unfortunate that the uh, PDI group hadn't been able to recognize anybody for three years. So um, I don't know. I just think that that's such an important piece of any community or any county that I would hope that their legislators or their elected folks are, are really working towards economic growth and development for those communities. So I thank you. It's a good honor. but. Uh, um, I don't know. We're not in it for the awards and stuff. It happens. Good. Okay, so Lord. Thanks. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, Sheriff Beaver, did you have anything this morning? To... No, uh, just kind of uh, update. The jail's currently empty. We had eight bookends uh, we held over the weekend. They are all RLR. And we're waiting on two out of Floyd County that we're going to hold for. So they'll be showing up here any day now. So that's all, really all I have unless you guys have anything to me. No, it's okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, county engineer is not here yet. Uh, uh, approve the minutes. We have uh, two sets. No, that's yeah, yeah, two sets. Um, the only thing that I saw a is. Uh, uh, where we uh, uh, basically uh, uh, gave the oath to Shannon after the board meeting. Uh, we let's uh, switch that around. Okay. Just wanted to, to uh, reflect exactly what happened. <laughs> Not that it's important, but uh, okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? No, I'm fine. Somebody have a motion? No motion to approve the minutes. Both sets? Yes. I'll second that motion. Been moved and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, Paulus. Aye. Hopelander. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, request for county assistance with the bike trail through McIntyre. And who do we have this morning? I'm Tony Connick, council member. That's a trail up on Puddock. I want to ask the county for $10,000 to go <coughs> towards concrete and fill for the bike trail. So we plan on running through, getting the bikes off the highway, on them well, right alongside the highway, bring them down Main Street so they go past the two businesses that benefit the two restaurants, bars. We get, Getting them to go by one of our parks and connect them back up to the trail. The uh, town's going to be pitching in over $20,000 for it, and we're asking FMC for $5,000, so nice to get a little help. About a $45,000 project. So. <coughs> Are they going to fill the ditch in somewhat? Uh, we're going to fill in, probably have to go in a few feet. Yep. So we're going to purchase the all find and find the bill first, and then we could probably talk to the engineer. He might have some. Say, yeah, we could. You know, I think there's a big pile sitting over there somewhere. That 
Well, some of the ditches are really, really steep there, and then some of them aren't. So. Okay. Yeah. No, I've ridden that bike trail. Yeah, that's going to be a good project. It's used more, a lot more than people thought it was. So. Yeah. So, uh, do you have signage up? I mean, that was one thing not that... Yeah, we got to talk to the land government on that one. Um, hopefully after we get the trail done, because right now people are starting to get, they kind of get lost, they go down an extra street, and, mm -hmm. and they just kind of go around, and they, they, they don't, can't find it go on further. We want to try to get them down Main Street so they can at least come to our businesses, and, mm -hmm. and then stop in for a burger or beer. So when is this going to take place? Uh, think? We're hopefully to start construction sometime May, June, and hope to have it finished by the 15th of August so they can open it up for kind of a town celebration. Yeah, I'm fine. Do we have the money for it? No, we're going to find it. Don't worry, we find it. Is this going to come out of this budget year or next budget year? I would suggest you wait and budget it for me and uh, Fourteen. Yeah, because it won't start. Right. You're going to be doing until August the fourteenth. Yeah. <coughs> I just thought we'd ask for that. We always do take it under consideration and mm -hmm. let us know. And but I'm in favor of it, so. Okay. Um, Agreed. Yeah, consensus of the board. Then uh, I think you better make a motion on this. I make a motion that we budget for the. Well, because we're going to be this kind but, of money. <laughs> but I mean. Sure. We're not going to appropriate the money for out of the next show, but I mean, all we can really do right now is uh, say that we're going to do it, can't we? I mean, can we mo motion the budget for it in our next year? Well, that'll come up in January, but then that's. I, I would or, do or are you just, just going to consider it? I, I would do consensus that we plan on taking it out of next year's budget and then we'll have to act formally next year. I mean, okay. when we actually have our budget next year as opposed to, because uh, I mean, we really can't, we, we can't commit a future. <laughs> and that's what, we, we, you know, even though we're probably all three going to be here yet next year in the budget, but we right. can't commit to a future. Uh, July 1. Yeah, but, right. but I say that. Uh, but we can have it. We can discuss it at budget time mm -hmm. and make Put sure we the, make sure we get it in the budget. Yep. We've done that number of times. We do it for the elderly. We do it for everything else. Well, I didn't know if you want. Man, mm -hmm. that we should. Be doing no, it I don't think we cut okay. a check today. I think we cut a check when the project's done or, okay. you know, or whenever they you know right. need it. Yep. Whatever. But um, consensus of the board put it in the okay. and uh, Check on us in January to make okay. sure we get it in that budget. I'll keep track of you. All right. <laughs> but no, well, that's a good project. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, man, with semis going by all the time, it's kind of dangerous right now. So. We rode right by the elevator up to the, oh. and down the blacktop, and we didn't realize that the trail was done all the way through to the north part of yeah, Not there, so on the way back, we got to ride the trail. Yeah, it all nice. the way up to the but then right there. <clears throat> it gets confusing when you get into the town because then there's no. Right now, the town's got an ordinance that we got to get switched. That there ain't supposed to be a bike trail in town. No. Oh. So we got to switch that. But Don't man, call it a bike trail. Call it a. Street. Current mayor kind of doesn't want to do nothing, so. Got to wait until next year. Okay. <clears throat> He's ready to go to Florida. I might interject. I've been working with the city council of McIntyre, and uh, I've been very impressed with how forward thinking uh, the current council is. And, and Donovan's just getting ready to get married, and I think he doesn't, you know, he doesn't say it's the wrong time for him to be pushing things as he's getting ready to move out of the community. But um, there is definite support from the city council. They had to commit their contribution to the project for the foundation application that is due today. So um, it's, um, it's fun to be able to see this community embrace that asset and see that there is a great potential for some strong economics because of the trail. So. No, I think McIntyre has a lot of potential, and uh, I am excited to uh, uh, 
you know, with forward thinking in that, uh, I, I think that can be our, really one of our up-and-coming communities, and uh, uh, they should not overlook the fact that uh, uh, Rochester is uh, trying to do, you know, an expansion that uh, may double their population, some say 10 years, some say 20 years, but uh, there could be a lot of uh, overflow that, uh, you know, uh, Rice Bill's uh, starting to take the real serious look and how they can make some improvements, and I think if you guys, you know, follow along the same lines or be the leader either way. Uh, no, I, I think the eastern part of the county really has uh, some good potential, so uh, again, keep up the good work. And, no, I have Okay, uh, we'll drop down uh, back to item five, county engineer update. Good morning. Good morning, engineer Brown. How are you today? Good. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't heard I called this morning to find out. But as far as she knew, she was still working. So. Um, I have put my name on nine of the red cars. Good. 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 And they'll be, uh, are they welding your name on this time? <laughs> Maybe they got a chalk mark on them. But uh, the other six should be off right at the end of the week. I talked to Keen this morning, and pending the DOT hydraulic review that they want, I'm going to start sending full packages out there. But what I want to do in the full package is make sure that uh, the timeline is right. I mean, we're going to put a really tight timeline on here with harvest and everything else. But it's, you know, I want a completion of maybe the second week in November. But, you know, we want to give them a couple weeks to look at the job and a couple weeks for the late start so we can schedule things. But if they can't do them in the time frame, I might try to throw our crews on it too. We've done them before. but. We can react right away. And we can go it. So, um, I told them I wanted to purchase the three that were on the ground. There's six on rail, like I said. I said put my name on them. And they're all, from what I understand, they're all mine for them. They're about 47 feet long. Which would work hydraulically according to my calculations in both locations. I did get a, an estimate from the US for uh, putting them back to pre flood conditions is what FEMA wants. And funding wise, I mean, it's the one bridge they said is going to cost a hundred and I don't remember the exact number, hundred and fifty thousand dollars to bring one back up to pre flood, and another sixty-five thousand to bring a small one up. So I mean, those are way within our ballpark. But it's going to cost to put these back in just with drill cars. So um, that's what they want. I emailed that to FEMA this morning. I just got it this morning. Um, so we'll well, what do you mean when you say pre flood? <laughs> Pre-flood. Just so I have a little idea. Uh, put back the wood piling and the wood back wall to pre-flood condition. Oh, okay. Don't improve it. You know, if you got to put new piling and it's new wood piling, it's not steel piling. You don't put a concrete back wall and you put a wood back wall in. You put the same deck back down on it when you're done. Pre-flood. What's it going to take to do it? So, okay. That's and I thought. I had the argument with him last week saying, who would do that? <laughs> For the money you're going to spend, who would? And I said, I'm not going to do that. So at any rate, that, they, I've got those numbers, they'll get them. But they need that because that's the amount of money they'll provide yep. to us. So if it's $10,000, then they may cover $10,000 of what we want to do with the rest of it's on. As it turns so actually, going to get into rail cars should be cheaper than going back to the... Correct. <coughs> and that's what they're going to determine whether or not it's complete failure, salvage, you know, the, then they'll probably go along with the project. So that's where I'm going to head with that. Um, question? Just thinking. Oh, you see the wheels turning, didn't you? Well, you, you jumped. <laughs> well, I something. just was... Yeah, no, it's, that's good. Well, rock run's done. Okay, but, I got the question. Yeah. All right. <laughs> going to cost 160000 to fix this bridge to pre, pre flood. Pre flood. And we dropped two rail cars in there at 10000 a pop and a bunch of gravel. Um, to say we got it all put back for twenty-five, they're only going to give us twenty-five, correct? 
That I'm not sure how they pay for that. If they pay less or if they will allow that money. There are certain instances where they'll allow that extra dollar to go toward another flood project. Whether that's FEMA or FHWA, I'm not sure. We there's two programs ready. I mean, if there's something where there's small project, large project, small project, you can estimate the value and they give you the dollar amount. If it's if you do it under what they have, you get the extra, but you got to put it towards another flood project or whatever. If it's more than what you estimate, you're stuck with the yeah. estimate. So I don't know how they'll handle this one. A small project is considered anything under 86.5 or 87.5. Well, we've estimated to be less than that, but we don't know until we get our quotes back what, what the labor is going to cost. And everything else. Is, do you know of any of the counties that do the rail car thing? Um, well, there's got to be a few well, others because they're getting harder to find. <laughs> yeah, Worth County does. <laughs> uh, there are some, not all. I, but I know there's counties that are using flatbed cars for bridges. So. Well, I'm just saying you don't want that word to get out too far so it's a price of rail cars. It's already out because uh -huh. they're getting harder to find. I mean, people in Missouri are, I mean, it's that and the, the cars are being part of the company, I guess. I don't know if there was a federal change in how long you use the cars on the rail before you got to get rid of them, or if there's a lease thing. I don't know what the railroad companies do and how they get their you know, cars or whatever. But that's saving this county. This save us a lot of money. Hundreds of thousands. And they're, they're worried about them. Not doing you it. know, one big question is, well, what happens are they going to wash out? And I took them to Dancer Avenue, the water top that, that went over the low water crossing and then over the pipe. Everything stayed in place. The pipe we didn't have a single pipe that weren't grouted in, they ended up downstream. So, well, you know, we have regular pipe, you know, all those pipe corrugated, and so then but when the, that water goes through there, that you create turbulence right. with all those. The the issue I think with some of those that washed out was the fact that they were backfilled with material that's scoured. Oh, right. You put grout in there, that's less susceptible to <coughs> yeah, scour, yeah, so yeah, the water ain't gonna get underneath those pipe. Yeah. Once the water gets underneath, they're gone. So, no, I, I mean, you go out and you look at those and you drive over them and think, wow, this is you know, a good idea. And if you can't see it, you know, you're not. Well, yeah, you just drive more. But, so, I don't know. That's where we're at. So the rock room's done. The painters will mostly be done this week here. They're going to head. We're doing some work south of Osage here. I've so got the AMZ running south on T38 yet, kind of fixing that up. So they haven't painted that yet. They're going to go and start into Worth County. When they're done with County, they'll bring a crew back to do all of our stop bars and our railroad symbols. A lot of the painting is done already. We've still got, I think, they were finishing up, they'll be up around Mitchell today, and then they'll probably go to the northwest corner here. They were probably going to take some time off here when the rain comes later this week. And then they've got a job they got to get to on a construction site, but that doesn't affect us because it's worth kind of so We're almost done here with paint. So that's where we're at. Any questions? What's the plan for Walnut Avenue south of Highway 9? Check, pl check plans have been submitted yesterday for a white topping project like we've normally done. Um, they'll review the check plans. I don't know when we'll get back. But then, uh, so when is that scheduled? When, when we that's a schedule for a January wedding. This January. This January. And then do it next summer. Yep. That's kind of what I told the people and uh, that they were concerned about all the patching that we're doing on it. Dangerous. Yeah, and, I mean, some of them went about that deep yesterday. When I they've been them. AMZ and they've been working on that road too the last couple of days. But you know what? Those bubble patches are really holding up. Yeah. Just that you're in a bubble patch. And it's usually just the edges that are blowing out. Mm -hmm. So. But even the edges of that bubble patch didn't blow out. No. But that, those bubble good. patches, we did, what, a two inch, 10 million easel? Yeah. We should have done the whole road. <laughs> Or, yeah. Well, yeah, but golly. I know, I know. But once they get the, you know, they get the, the problem with those, some of those other patches that are on there, <coughs> the, the cold patch doesn't, it's just cold patch. It, it doesn't, doesn't stick together. It doesn't, the, no, when it you doesn't put the AMZ on top of there, it's like, yeah. you know, it'll hold them together a well, lot better. It'll, it'll, it ought to help through the winter. It ought to help through the winter, and then by then spring will be here, and, and depending on how the bids come in, maybe we'll bump that thickness up a half an inch. 
we, we did it on Stacy Bill and we bumped it up a whole inch because of the wheel riding. But the patches are holding. Yeah. They are. You know, and the rest of the road's falling apart. <laughs> we get white top. Well, I know, I know. But I guess there's a, quite a bit of truck traffic with what the folk, people were telling me down there, so I know. It's the west side of the road is worse because yeah. the trucks are full. They're yep. And then on the way back, but they're not as bad. Had the same thing that was on glass that time when we had to do that. <coughs> well, the other option is we could bump that up to a five inch overlay. I think I would think about that. We can go through check plant stage and if we're going to change the thickness, I don't think yeah. it's going to change anything. Because the estimates. And then maybe dig out some of those bad spots and make it full depth. Is that, didn't you do that on, mm -hmm. on three? We did on some where we. 60 if it was. I don't know if we cored them out, we thickened them up over some of that stuff. They were bad. Because but they were already poured out. I just saw it bring it up today and you know, we discuss it. And yep. So, but I did say that, I think. Next and if we get to some locations, even during the paving, where we see that there might be some problems, we can yeah. we can jack the paver up a little higher and a little thicker. We've been fortunate with the dollars that we've been getting with these overlays that we estimated in the past. We've estimated two hundred thousand a mile for complete construction. This time we estimated two hundred twenty thousand. In addition to that, we don't have to rework our shoulders, so there's no dirt work. So there's a cost savings there. There might be some money left in our estimate to bump it up a little heavier. Now is that a road to market width roads? Yeah. The well, Yeah, that's a farm to market route which we're using farm to market funds to pay for. So it wasn't near when they paid it? Not that I'm aware of, no. It's a twenty two foot ride wide road before I got here. So. Yeah, I don't know when that was put in. Um, sure. Two thousand four. I'd have to go look at our map again to look. That was one of the first, that road got put in the first year I was on the board. Okay. I think 2001. 2001. Okay. It, uh, well, it's 13 years. And, and I don't think it's a very heavy section of that stuff. Oh, well, it's just like the same as, <coughs> is it 360th that goes straight out of uh, uh, New Haven? Mm -hmm. Sure, yep. And that was the same? They'd be the same thing. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. time. Stillwater was the same time, too. And so we it's old enough around the well for the, the cross section that's there, but it's time. Yeah. Down all of those. Is um, Quail Avenue in the project? Um, quail. Yeah. Is that in the project? I mean, we have not determined to do anything on Quail. That's a farm to market gravel yes. right now, correct? Yes. We haven't done it. We haven't entertained that idea. I mean, it's been brought up before about farm to market paving, but uh, we have not put it in any program with uh, where we're at with funding. Is that something we need to start looking at? Or not all farm to market routes are paved. <coughs> right. Um, look at the road count too, don't you? We'd look at the road count. I mean, I'm can you check the yeah. Well, you know, you know that's yeah. when you look at the when you look at the layout of the the pavement. It's uh, that's probably one of the only stretches in the county where there's a long stretch without a crossroad in it going north and south. But, uh, mm -hmm. but for all the traffic that's coming down from Minnesota to Toterville, I would still have that more of a priority than, than not trying to be unkind. But I mean, there's, there's a lot of grain that's coming down and a lot of fertilizers going back to Minnesota on, on uh, Hickory there from, uh, I say, from Toterville. Right now, and I think those people do have a legitimate concern. Other than the Toterville project, which I know that has been brought up before, but the last I understood was when those come in and do it, there is no new paving in, in the five year plan as far as taking the other road and paving. At this time, we don't have a plan. So. Yes. I just want to know if you've had any more thought about the creek bed down there at my place. Yeah, I've got uh, the Army Corps and the DNR were supposed to get back to me probably in another week to let me know. And then we'll be uh, putting the avians back up and rebuilding those walls. That's good to hear. So as soon as we hear from them that they're okay with it. And then what about the access back up on my hill? That's where the... The Gavians will give you in that, and that'll be backfilled, so they're all going to get fixed at the same time. You're getting to be better. <laughs> I'm liking you better now. <laughs> <laughs> so.
It's all in. It's just been really. I understand it's been an inconvenience too. Um, when you hear you talk about these roads now too, this is not my main concern, but I'm just going to bring it up. The other day, uh, one of the local farmers there was bringing his grain into town in that section of the road that hits the bridge on the west side there, down by my place. Okay. He must have hit it just wrong, and the whole whether it's his wagon, whether it's the road, the axle broke or whatever, and both his wheels went taken off. Really? He ended up parking his wagon in our land there, you know, just because and the elevator had to come out and suck the corn out or beans, I guess it was, you know. But I don't know, maybe you want to take a peek at that and see how right. bad that there's a, a, a bad there's a, spot a stiff, is. If there's a stiff jump in that approach there, will Yeah, I mean, so he could have been seriously hurt. Sure. But, but it was, okay. See, there's another road in some time here. Oh, we have so much traffic too, but ours isn't just farmers. I mean, it's just people, oh. and they go by 80 miles an hour. I don't know how they make that curve. It's Two just wheels. so scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> I don't know. I have a motor circle license. Oh, uh, <laughs> But then if you're a farmer on that way, what's your alternative? Yeah. T38 or Highway 9? Oh, I know it. I know it. You know, and so that would be the... But the it's broad. scary, you know, when some... I'm always afraid that when some of that big machinery is going around those curves, yeah. and you meet Somebody's some there. some guy <laughs> coming even 40 miles an hour. Right. Oh. Yeah, just, just curious, it's been a few weeks since I've been by Acorn Park out there in St. Ansgar, but that bridge, I came across there a few weeks ago. and Turtle Creek? Yeah, and it kind of surprised me how rough and yeah, we're, uh, loose. And we keep we keep putting rock in there. We've got a contractor on the hook to come back. We're going to put temporary paving down for the winter. Next spring we'll be putting new approaches back in there. So it's just a, a due process of getting schedules lined up. I haven't thought about just a sign that says... There are signs with are there? on there. Okay. flags on them. So. Okay. Yep, they're there. And in fact, I think they might even be out there today putting some more rock and blade in again. Yeah, they basically blade that and two days later just like it was. That would surprise me. But, uh, and I've kind of become a road kind of sewer. <laughs> since the flood? Just since work on transportation issues. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he wants it to settle here over the winter before we put a permanent fix to it, so. Yeah. Well, and this is the way the FEMA, the FEMA and FHWA stuff's working. We just didn't have time to put a project together because it's got to go through a DOT letting. And that process is a little bit, takes a little bit longer than just doing it locally, but then we get it funded. Well, just so you know, too, we're lobbying extremely hard with the DOT on 218 North. That that is got to be a higher priority than what it is. So I think we're making some headway on that, and um, hopefully we can maybe get bumped up the list a little bit. Do you know, know where are we on the list? Not high not, enough. Not, on <laughs> not the even on the list? Not, it's not on the budget project. I think they seal coated that just to get by until. That's like another year seven road. or eight. I don't know what. It's like another gravel road. I mean, I mean, it's what they did improved the ride a little bit, but uh, basically sealed it to keep the moisture out. Well, on the eighth here, a week from today, they are at Mason City. Uh, I think they're at uh, the Frank Lloyd Wright building, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it is possible to get on the agenda to. Uh, address those people. Uh, that's the same morning we have our meeting. But uh, uh, we could send Engineer Brown down there instead to explain why we need that thing upgraded. Your call. Yeah. Why don't you try to get on the agenda and if you can why it, it'll be hard but we'll try to get by without you next week. <laughs> That's federal funds. That, that's, that's all state money. That's all state. It's, 218 has got nothing to do with county money or anything. That's their right, right, program. Right. Yeah. The money comes down from the feds. Is there well, state money in combination. The it's a combination. It's combination. Just like our money is. They get part of the road just tax from this. Uh, Chris Diggins could, you know, at night talk, can probably give you uh, contact info if you need it. Do you have any vehicles you might want to be selling? 
Well, I don't know. Does I don't know if the quarry down there has enough. Well, there's. Uh, I never thought of that too. Yeah. If they've got any pill. strippings or anything laying around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you check with uh, Lindsay to see if. Yeah. That won't because be if we could, yeah, if we right. can help back and tie her out a little bit on, like you say, filling in that. Uh, so well, the other option. Using it till next year, you say. That's right. um, if they want to pave it in uh, probably July, you know, it should settle. And one thing that may, maybe we can discuss is all of our ditch shaping we have going on from FEMA. The contractor's response will be responsible for getting rid of the material. We haven't written the coal package yet because we're not that far with FEMA, but designate on the field and go there. Bit enough that way, I don't know if FEMA will allow that or not. Because if you if they get I think they might want to take it to a if we take control of the material they want to salvage in a certain line line field or whatever. What are they looking to do? Just are they just trying to widen the streets to pave or what are they gonna it's it's on uh, no, it's Walnut. On, it's on oh, Walnut. 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 Where they yeah, are the trail. trail comes right out on the road. Okay. okay. To put it on the back slope. Which side are we going on? Assuming that's the one on the west side. West side. West side. I mean, we have that old stockpile on those in here. Oh well, yeah, they go on the side too. Do we truck at that bar? If there's something available there closer by, we might as well use that. Access to it. They don't ask about how much material it's going to take. Are you saying total cost? 40? 45,000. That's what the total cost is going to be. Is that to pay even everything then? Yeah, well, they have to have an estimate somewhere because they applied to Brenda for a grant. It's Tony Keenings. Yeah. Oh, we got it. He's the one that brought that proposal. You can't be your neighbor. Oops. He's tomorrow. He's going to point kicks. It's somebody else. It's not that He's got a little neck in there. He's he does it's a coding. It's a for that group. Conings. Yeah, conings. Conings. Probably spelled the same way. It's spelled the same, pronounced conings, I think. Okay. Instead of conings. I think he's on city council right now. So. Mm, correct. Yeah. Hmm. So they want to put a trail. on. How far off the highway are they going to want to put it? Well, they need to talk to you about that, I think. Because here you're dealing with 
the issue that will be brought up is two lane bike trail traffic and Both you're, lanes. well that's fine, but you've got opposing car traffic coming this way and bike traffic going this way. How far off the road do you have to be? off the road do you have to be? Well, you don't want them, we ran into this in the past, but because there was a barrier between the two of sorts. There was a low speed limit. Now there's supposed to be a low speed limit in McIntyre of 25 miles an hour, which may not be such a big issue, but when you think of the truck traffic going through there, do you want to be on a bike closest to that lane with a semi coming at you through town? Now like I said, 25 miles an hour, people will stay 25 miles an hour. You know, you can probably swing opposing traffic that way with a bike trail and have them run from the traffic. Either way you put it, if you're going to put a bike sale trail on the other side, you're going to have the same problem with with traffic going this way and bike traffic coming this way. That's why sometimes you see a bike lane on each side, or they put it far enough in the right away where you've got a, a decent separation. I'd have to go back and look in the bike trail specifications to see if they've got a, a proposed adequate distance between the two. But that's something you may want to may want to caution them on as you get how close the traffic are they going to plan on running. It. You know, when you get into when you get into the city street portion, that's a little bit different. There's less traffic on that highway through the woods. Has an ordinance for no bike trails in the city? I know. They have an ordinance for no bike trails in the city. Oh, I'm sure that was rather interesting. Uh -huh. Well, they're going to rescind it or change the ordinance, but <coughs> timing and all in the background. So we should have 20 copies. I don't know where they came up with the estimate. If they did they hire a consultant to kind of go through it? I, I mean, I don't want to change the rule. Why wouldn't they do it like this? Because that's what our business is on. Twenty foot big sign there. They are. Or they can go like this and take more part. Yeah, you know, that's true too. Well, anyway, that's. Are they using? Are they using their own funds, or they've got they've got some? It's. Twenty thousand from McIntyre, fifteen thousand from Brenda, and they're asking for ten for us. And it doesn't total up, so I don't know. And what? It doesn't go over forty-five, so I don't really know which ten's coming from. Brenda's going to be fifteen. Five. It's five. Oh, five. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I should just come in and ask what it is. Throw out a figure and what those. Well, anyway, it's, it's a project. I mean, it, that little community is poised to. I guess I don't know where the bikes questions. go now. They just jump on the just highway. Just on the highway. highway. On the highway. Right on the highway. Anything off the highway is better than what it is now. Exactly. Because you're on the highway. Right. Sure. That's why you're a lot faster when you're on the highway. I <laughs> <laughs> sure do. You move a lot faster. Because you want to get off the highway. I mean, when you hear that air horn behind you, it's kind of nudging your. <laughs> Well, I know there's always been kind of a speed issue through McIntyre for years. Hey, you give me the manpower, nobody will speed through McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> we just sold an old cop car in the Chicago County. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always said we should have a, a mannequin sitting in there. And yeah, like that. No, with the radar, radar, radar gun. Radar. They set those, uh, those speed signs up so that. If you're over like well, speed limit, the lights flash. Yeah, yeah. we can set a cop car there, and when they go over the speed limit, cherry turn on. <laughs> yeah, to try to address that, we're going to be buying a speed trailer in November through the STEP program. Okay. All the guys working their overtime and such, and we can set that up there. It'd be a good place for it to be. It doesn't take pictures and it doesn't issue citations, but it it, it will flash work. and and it does indicate. You know, speeds of oncoming cars. So we'll put it up there. Whatever we can do to. Well, I just I, 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 I know that even as I was a kid, yeah. it was always bad through there because nobody wants to sure go to the chain it, so somebody will steal it. <laughs> <laughs> they will. And they'll get vandalized, and once or it's busted up, well, uh, nothing I can do about it. If that's how they're going to treat the stuff, then we'll use it till it's broke. <laughs> that's all I can do. Yeah. But we got to come and be five thousand dollar piece of equipment. So. People how often do they calibrate those things for the radar? I don't know if it, it comes calibrated from the factory. And that's all I know about it. It's sure. So, we'll get one of those little cameras that 
blinks. So even when you walk up to it, it looks at you. Yeah. <laughs> we could, I suppose you could authorize some speed cameras and start issuing citations off, off the video. Mm -hmm. Who wants that controversy? Cameras <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't either. I guess we catch them fair square or we don't catch them at all. So. But we'll try and no. I just know that that's with, that, with a bike trail going in there, that'd be one of my concerns. Is well, I think a lot of people, right? I mean, I, mean, I, I I'm mainly a weekender, so it's probably not during the week. But I imagine there are people that ride that during the week also. Mm -hmm. There's people that just jump on at certain points and yeah. ride for the night. But I'm also an advocate that, uh, and I realize we've got more signage in one respect than we need, but. I think there's a, some of the roads wouldn't hurt again. Share the road with the bike thing, and, and just you know, as a reminder again that those people are out there. Or Stacy Bell uh, sign, are you watching your speed VR? <laughs> I like that one. Especially around the bike trail. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't want to just put them on willy nilly. In the well, and I don't want to encourage anybody like south of St. Amsterdam where I live. I mean, that is really more of a dangerous road. Right. Uh, you, you know, with Halverson Park and all of that, you, you try not to. But on some of these other roads, uh, between, let's say, uh, Mitchell and Osage on that, uh, you, you know, here again, uh, uh, a lot of bikers do use that one, cause, uh, and then they'll go from Mitchell West and, and, and so on. But is it a designated bike trail at the moment? Where you, I know that technically you're supposed to share the road at any point in time. Typically, the signs don't put up because it doesn't mean it's by the time it comes to it. And that's where we probably want them here. Right. Here. <clears throat> I mean, to start throwing signs up just on any road. Well, we, we yeah. really should, even right now, as long as they're, uh, that wouldn't hurt that in McIntyre, that uh, two signs on each end of the town share the road. Uh, reminder. City or county signs? Well, it's county road, isn't it? But it becomes city, right? Yeah. But we own that. We're taking care of those boys up there. Can you want people? Just get some, just get some little deer crossing signs and put a bicycle on there. <laughs> so would you like me to get a couple signs there then? Well, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. If you can, I don't know. It is a bike trail in the county. I mean, it's something. Maybe that'll slow now. Anything else for Engineer Bill? You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Yeah, if you can, uh, if you can get on your next week agenda and just explain what. Um, yeah, I think that's why that every. Why that's not on their radar? I, mean, I suppose it's just like anything else. It's their funding. It's you know they've got to worry more about 218 than they got number nine. And, and I don't know if it's you know District Two's got a lot of well, you want to say a lot of state highway, but how much money are they dumping mm -hmm. into from South to Osage to Floyd? That's a significant project in itself. That they've only got so many dollars in their coffers too to rebuild back up and use again. I don't know if they can pull from other districts in the state or, or what. Any idea when the old terminal bridge was put in the new one? I can go back and look at the files. I know very good Was that still a state highway at that time? Uh, I don't or was it turned over as a count by that we had that's our which we had that How does uh, how does the state determine whether or not they use asphalt or they use concrete? Because if you go down fourteen you get south of from like Allison going to Parkersburg, or mm -hmm. this Parkersburg south to Grundy. That's a that's a white top. And I think that's an overlay. Yeah. Yep, overlay on concrete. But then why not from like Allison to Charles City? It's I don't know same, if the district engineers make that call or if they. Highway. If they, I honestly don't. Know. I mean that overlay is is. I think it's pretty darn smooth. I mean. It is. You know, yeah. Isn't that an smooth. overlay from? Yeah. From uh, when you get on 14. Yeah, yeah. They've redone 14 all the way on my route, so I'm grateful. But I'm just kind of curious as to why they wouldn't have done in 
Oh, here on the DOT has been, I think, historically, they haven't been biased between the two at all. They try to, I think, they try to split their their pavement. Yeah, we see that on the avenue. Well, and see right. Which, see which ones are holding up. And they may they may <laughs> have bid the project both ways and took the lowest bid. I don't know how they determine it. But some of that asphalt on the avenue, they've been redone mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. the Avenue of Saints went in. Mm -hmm. That should have indicated right there that you know, concrete's maybe the way to go. <coughs> they had some soil issues there. I think maybe the road a little wavy and then the traffic loads and everything else. So I'm not making excuses for them. I just know that they've had shoulder problems and stuff there with clay soils and, and drainage. I'm a concrete advocate. I like concrete. Well, I like asphalt for the rideability, but I, but boy, you want longevity. I think concrete's your, you know, and, and for us, it's been proven to be yeah. less expensive. Yeah. Yep. And so what I'm thinking is at the state. I mean, uh, asphalt's probably great for inside your city limits and things like that, and parking lots. But boy, out on where the rubber meets the road, I think that. You get more bang for your buck for that concrete. Anyway, that's, I'm done. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Kenny. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Uh, items to note. Meetings attended. That's Tuesday. Uh, community action. Can anybody here tell me when community action began? Raise your hand. Well, she's out in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her, see if she knows. <clears throat> we had board, board uh, training last week. Community action was uh, it was started back in 1962. It was, uh, no, it was 64. Lyndon Johnson. It was the war on poverty. And what community action does is they go into communities and they try to, um, well, what's wrong? You know, we're having this problem, so that's where the money goes. I mean, it's, you know, the WIC program, you right. know, all that type of stuff, and um, and the LIHEAP, the, the energy thing, and, and they get monies from many different sources, um, you know, a lot of the, the, the Malayan energy and all that, they get a certain amount of the money, and they have to go to to this type of thing. Uh, who was the first administrator of Sergeant Schreier? <laughs> now you all learned something today. <laughs> you really didn't want to do it. We had this big movie. We had to watch it for an hour. It was very interesting, I thought. Did uh, you have popcorn? No, actually we had ribs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better than popcorn. So uh, that was... Yeah. <clears throat> and then we went ahead and we had then we had to approve all the contracts, every meeting, and all that. And so we went through all that. We didn't get home until 9 30. So then on Wednesday night, we had FMC landfill meeting, that was a full board meeting. We approved our next year's budget. Um, <clears throat> we did have some discussion on gifts and grants, and I'm slowly wearing those people down. Um, <laughs> You know, you can't continue to, you know, our profit probably is projected to be $250,000 next year. You know, you've got to do something back to the communities. And someone brought up, well, could lower the tipping fees. Our tipping fees are right in the middle of the state's tipping fees. We're $41 a ton. One of Ship counties, at, I think, $65 a ton. So our tipping fees are not out of line by any stretch. We've just had a lot of good management over the years. Um, we're setting pretty healthy. I bet, if, and I know in like about three to four years, I'm guessing right now at our present rate of tonnage, we'll have to put another cell in. <clears throat> but that cell is going to cost us probably a million dollars. Uh, that's always been a projection. We've always come in under that. So I think somehow, some way, in our January meeting, we'll have to come up, well, maybe have that discussion again. And I know over at uh, Prairie Ridge, what they do, they take a portion every year 
of their investments, uh, whether it's 10% or 15%, and that has to go towards, you know, to get back. So. I'm all setting up recycling in rural areas that don't have it. Rural areas, recycling, you can go out to the landfill anytime, take your recycling there, there's a, open the door and throw it in. Everything goes in the same dumpster. We, that's something fairly new this this summer. Um, whenever I go to the landfill, I always throw my recycling in the back because it's quick and easy to get rid of it. I don't have to worry about getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning and running out to the curb. You know, and, and they're always, during their time out there, that's... But one of the some of the things that came up that night was uh, um, a housing program to help with housing. Smaller communities did not like that idea because they said, "Well, a lot of great idea, but nobody's ever going to build a house in our small community." Uh, scholarships came up. Um, and Pretty much it. I can't think what the other. They seemed like there was something else that came up too. And they were all good ideas. I think you know. Somehow, some way, we'll get something done. But anyway, that and then uh, on Wednesday morning, I had CSS in Grundy Center, and we approved. We didn't approve. We approved studying um, spectrum over at Decora. I think there's a. There's a that were spectrum that over there. Um, they are asking for two hundred fifty thousand from CSS to set up some type of a program. Spectrum is a lot like MIVI, and which will help to bring these folks through and to get them out of the train and then out into the community. And they're different. You know, those the folks that you know go to Spectrum and MIVI, they all. They're proud of what they do, you know. They're and they're good workers. They're reliable. They can pass a drug test, and they got the skills that they need for the particular jobs that they do, you know. So, but they <clears throat> somehow need. There's a building over there, but they need to get a program started to move these people on. And Sherry Becker was at our meeting. And, um, that was one of the big things, you know. And then other than that, it was just approving the the monies. You know, we always we always approve the claims. We always. You know, we talk about you know the <coughs> and moving the ten million dollars to Butler County. And so anyway, that was my means. Other than running at the back and forth the landfill because we're <coughs> changing, we're moving, we're going to change our uh, banking to CUSB. Um, it just work out better right now. That way, uh, one of the employees can do the night deposit. Here rather than having to run into Riceville. You know, it used to be for security out of Charles City, and then Riceville is for security. But, so I think the board decided that, you know, just to make things easier. And, mm -hmm. so. and I had a second judicial last Friday, and we have a new director. Uh, we got a promotion from within, and a uh, nice gal. I think we'll, she'll do well. And, uh, we uh, got our annual report that we can put on file. Uh, so we would have done that. And the other thing is that, uh, again, we've just, <coughs> there's been a lot of work on the project. That's, uh, so other than that, that was my two meetings. And uh, manure management plan update then. Yeah, three of them. Yeah. Puff uh, uh, D and J Farms, Section 9, and Metro Township, Puffco LLC, Moshe Ridge, Section 4 of Douglas, and Fred Kashmir, and Section 1 of Jenkins. So noted. Uh, item C, Otrano Bridge. Got an email yesterday, actually came from uh, County Attorney Law, that uh, was forwarded from uh, Mike Burbick, and apparently Will Morrow has uh, uh, been looking into uh, the ownership on that thing and it doesn't show up in his abstracts. And so uh, uh, 
uh, he was wondering if there uh, was any resolutions or that uh, uh, showing up anywhere where we actually transferred, we actually uh, 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 made the official uh, uh, agreements and so on, and right now uh, I don't um, see anything. Nobody's seeing anything, so we're not sure where that's sitting. But uh, so the auditor owns it, right? The auditor might own it. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? But in any event, I want to bring you up to speed on that. that uh, that's and of course, uh, some of the documentation we're not even sure which year to look in. You know, to try to find it in the minutes or it could go back a long way. I mean, it could be just transferred from property owner to property owner. Well, and and the bridge might have sat there for two years before it got trade. I mean, the new one might have got built and mm -hmm. might have been, I don't know. So, in any event, we're not... see whether there was ever an easement or... We're not finding anything right offhand, so just to give you a heads up on that. Maybe Betty has something or a little well, black book. I, I, well, I, I, I'll look back on my... I kept, you know, a day book. I'll look back. It did happen, I know, when I was on the board. Okay. And I'll look back and see if I can find it. I looked, started looking in 83 and I didn't... Where there was a resolution. I remember the people came in and they were interested in mm -hmm. in having it. You know, Wilder's was it? Wilder. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we I looked at Wilder's property cards and yeah. there's nothing in there on yeah. that and on their deed and. And item D, vehicles for sale. Now well, we got the EMA truck and I don't know we, since we have this other pickup we wanted to. I'll get rid of the Tahoe. Since we got this new pickup. Yeah. I know. I don't, I don't think you have anything more. <coughs> Taking care of that. So. You got a light bar? Laying around? <laughs> I have. That Tahoe looks in the back and tire. <laughs> the light bar. On yeah, they won't know the difference. Looking to get me in trouble, Joel. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We'll testify on your behalf. Yeah, we'll tell them what <laughs> like I said. You're just looking to get me in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, that Tahoe. I guess if it's time for it to go, it's time for it to go. I mean, I don't, I don't unless somebody in one. Hey, he's looking for a vehicle. <laughs> that would be yeah, better than what they had. Yeah, no, I know it's it's been used and abused over its life. I think. Well, why don't you check with even county conservation? I mean, uh, as yeah. long as we're, <clears throat> even though I think most of the time they do their own thing, as long as we're doing it the way we could, if they have something. So many miles. Uh, truck. Uh, uh, hundred and twelve and twenty percent of the bottom. What year is that? Oh, five. Uh, yeah. is it Ford and Chevy. Chevy. I guess I think it's overall. Got the keys. We wanna. Take a test drive. Where's it sitting? Just over here. Oh. Ray brought it here a week ago. So it's got a topper on the back. Mm -hmm. And kept serviced and everything. So it makes somebody a good good truck. You gonna continue to get pickups, you think? I'd like to. They're yeah, working they're out well. I think that's a good great idea. Yeah, they really are. Financially <clears throat> and in the end, they're wise. worth some money. Yeah, I, I would anticipate 10 to 12,000 on a raise, maybe, maybe a little more, but yeah, that's my plan. Yeah, that's a good plan. You know, I mean, it's just... Anything else for the good of the cause this morning? Oh, Betty, do you remember when Community oh, Action got started? <laughs> No, I don't. They well, were already. Don't worry, you didn't know. Nobody else did either. Well, they were already there, Joe, when I got on the board. No, no. I mean, when the nationally. whole nationally, the whole community action thing started, took off in this country. No, I don't. Okay. Although, <laughs> it was under the. Hey, you can see I'm the oldest person in the room. No, Can't no. Show that thing. <laughs> Most of us. The best memory. I don't know when were you born. Never mind. You know, oh, 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 oh. Well, she's, after probably, that. she's probably the youngest one in the room. So, but uh, it was after that. Sixty-four. Lyndon Johnson is the war on poverty. Uh, when that all got started, and, and the first administrator was Sergeant Schreiber. 
okay. director, I guess, of it. And he really didn't want the job. We, we had board training over there the other night in the Gulf, and Des Moines came up, and she was very good, and, and we watched the movie. And, uh, and <clears throat> when Lyndon gave his speech about, and he gave, he was a teacher when he first got out of college, and he taught at a school, he said, and he says, I knew about as much Spanish as they knew English. And he says, but he could see how poor they were. And he thought, if I could ever in my life get to a position where I could do something about it, he said, I would. And he told Congress when he was giving, he said, I'm at that position, and I am going to do something mm -hmm. about it. And they all stood up. I <clears> said, <throat> by golly, I wish we had a Congress like that today. You know, I mean, ready to rally around and do something right. It was good. It was good training, and but I, I thought, well, I could be part of my report. Come back and see how many people here, and then we started. It was '64, just the war on poverty. That, you know. Well, I think of all the good things they do, and you know, at this children's health fair, I mean, something that you wouldn't. A lot of people just think, oh, insulation, things like that, you know. Yeah. But the dental health program, and you know. Um, those kids, I mean, I sat and watched that dental health program and Peg Funk is their dental hygienist, you know? And they've cut her hours back substantially, but uh, she has nine counties, I believe, and she said that Mitchell County is by far the best that ever puts on a children's health fair, you know? They do the best job of it. And there's only three counties that ever do it. But, you know, I, I think of all the good things they do, and that isn't just for the kids in poverty. It was the kids that, you know, all oh, the students yeah. that go to school. And, yeah. You know, and I think of all the way that they went home learning how to brush their teeth properly, how to floss properly. I mean, a lot of good things, you know. And we, uh, Karen Nagy just joined on there over there. She was invited to come and asked to be a, mm -hmm. I think it was public sector or private. Well, anyway, there's three different groups elected, public and private, I guess, that represent that board. So, yeah, it's interesting. There's nine columns. And saw Jerry Plague. Oh, obviously, that's good. Very tough. So, how many months was he missing his board meetings? I mean, no, he was up to Rochester just for Ever he took. He came probably for the last six months. You know, and then but Jerry showed up that night. I was walking in. He was getting out of the car and held the door for him. I didn't know if he was going to make it up the steps, but I guess he did. You know, could have took the elevator, but then he left early, too. But. Anyway. Well, and the federal government is shutting down, and this local government is expanding, so. Around <laughs> <laughs> the ball now. <laughs> Nothing else for the good of the cause, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>